Before I begin today's video, I want to give a special shout out to my patrons over on patreon.com slash Rebecca. They make these videos possible, and in exchange, they get early ad-free videos, weekly newsletters, monthly Q&A live streams, and a smart and kind community to interact with. If you want to get in on that action, please go to patreon.com slash Rebecca. You will love being a patron, and you will find it immensely rewarding. Anyway, last week I told you about a news study that found that watching a rags to riches TV show made Americans more likely to believe in the American dream that anyone can rise above their economic caste to become a success, provided they have the talent and work ethic. One thing I did not mention in that video, despite it being relevant, was uh, the availability heuristic. I didn't want to get too sidetracked in that video, but for this video... It's perfectly related, so let's talk about it. In the case of the rags to riches study, part of the results may be explained by this. Maybe people were more likely to believe the rags to riches narrative because it's not really something that they think about very often. They don't really hold strong opinions about it. So watching a rags to riches show immediately before weighing in on the American dream influences them because their little monkey brains just grab whatever position they most recently viewed. You see, human brains require a lot of energy to run. Uh, so as we evolved, we developed shortcuts that let us generally reach the correct conclusion without doing the work. Like noticing that your teacher usually puts the correct answer as C on multiple choice tests. So when you're out of time, but you still have one complicated problem left to do, you just fill in C and you hope for the best. These shortcuts worked very well for keeping your great, 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 etc. grandparents alive long enough to reproduce. But these days, they screw us up quite often. In the case of the availability heuristic, it means that when you're asked a question, you're more likely to think that the correct answer is whatever comes to mind first, the most easily available bit of information. And that information may be immediately available because it's the right answer or because it's like the thing you heard most recently, which is why uh, this past weekend when I was playing code names with my friends, the clue was food and my first guess was grass because a few hours earlier I had taken my dog on a walk and he ate so much grass that he barfed. My second guess was centaur, which kicked off a 20 minute argument over whether or not eating a centaur is considered cannibalism. The uneasy conclusion that we landed on was it depends which part of the centaur. The torso area remained contested ground. Anyway, all of this leads me to the topic of today's video. Which mythical creatures are ethical to eat? No, okay, it's not that. It's actually about how researchers convince some people to maybe sort of believe ridiculous lies just by repeating them. For a long time now, sociologists have known that you can make people believe an untruth by simply repeating it, providing that the subjects in question have no prior knowledge of the thing you're telling them about. This is known as the TBR effect, which stands for truth by repetition. For instance, if I tell you that the zipper was invented in Norway, which is an actual example from a prior study, you're more likely to think that that's a true statement the more you hear it repeated, despite the fact that the zipper stands proudly alongside the bazooka and the fortune cookie as an all-American invention. Despite the fact that the, the study I took this from says that it was invented in Switzerland. No, that's wrong. Anyway, the TPR effect seems to work on any statement that has truth ambiguity, like the temperature of a chicken's body is about 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or you will love being my Patreon patron and you will find it very rewarding. If you don't know for sure, repetition is going to be really effective at convincing you that the statement is true. And I mean, one of those statements was true, but was it the internal temperature of a living chicken or was it the fact that you will love being my Patreon patron and you will find it very rewarding? 
Who's to say? There's additional evidence that you might even be able to make people doubt their existing knowledge by repeating a fa- falsehood. So not something so ambiguous, something that people know is probably not true, like the Atlantic Ocean is the largest ocean on Earth. But the data on whether or not that really works is kind of messy. So jumping into this fray is this new study that aimed to show that if you look very, very closely at the data with a high enough level of sensitivity, you can not only make people doubt their existing knowledge with sort of plausible lies like that, but you can even make people start to believe complete absurdities like the earth is a perfect square. A square, not even a cube. A cube is at least three-dimensional. Who's going to believe the Earth is a square? Okay, so nobody walked away from the study actually believing that the Earth is a perfect square, but it did get a bit interesting. Um, to get very sensitive data, instead of just asking people if they did or did not believe a statement, the researchers asked 232 Americans to rate statements on a very big scale, from negative 50, definitely false, to positive 50, definitely true. And the subjects did this rating after they had already seen certain statements repeated five times when they were rating how interesting they found statements. So half the statements were incredibly stupid, like the United States was founded in 1979 and elephants are faster than cheetahs. Sure enough, most of the subjects gave higher scores to the stupid statements that they saw repeated several times. They still rated them in the negative, but they did find them slightly less false than the stupid statements that they did not see repeated. Weird. All of that was pre-registered, which is a great way to conduct experiments. I've talked about this in the past. Before the experiment even started, the researchers confirmed exactly what their hypothesis was going to be and what statistical analyses they would be performing to test that hypothesis. This helps prevent researchers from knowingly or unknowingly tweaking data to get interesting results. But once that experiment was done, they drilled down a bit on the individual subjects. They found that while 53% of subjects did get fooled by the repetition, 19% weren't affected at all, and 28% actually went in the opposite direction. They rated the repeated absurdities as even less true than the absurdities that they hadn't seen before. The researchers, because that this part wasn't originally part of their hypothesis, they're not sure why those three groups reacted so differently to repetition. So that gives them something new to dig into in the future. So to conclude, I'd just like to stress that, you know, you will love being my Patreon patron and you will find it very rewarding. Please learn more at patreon.com slash Rebecca. See how well that worked. <laughs>